Hey guys, it's Key again from Kegland, and today we're talking about PET kegs. So a lot of you guys will know that we've been selling these Oxybar four liter and eight liter kegs on our website for a while. A lot of you guys have loved these as a low cost uh, method to get into kegging, or also just to have an inexpensive keg you can take to a party and you don't bother too much if you leave it behind or it gets damaged, or you, for instance, lend a uh, keg to a friend because you want to give them some beer. But we've just got a new one, which is our Oxybar 20 liter. So it has a lot of the features of the small ones too. So we put a special barrier material into the wall. So um, inside the wall, they're not just straight PET resin. We put a blend of stuff in here, including nylon and some other stuff, which greatly increases the oxygen uh, or decreases the oxygen transmission rate. So typically, if we were to just use clear, you know, straight PET resin with no additives in it, we'd end up with recommending people put their beer in here for up to one month. So if you look at, for instance, like a, you know, a firm Zilla or an all-rounder, you know, for instance, or a, a firm's Zilla Conical or something like that, generally we're making those as fermenters. So we don't expect people to put beer in there for a long period of time. And also the activity of the yeast is essentially mopping up any oxygen. And in the obviously early stage of the fermentation, the oxygen's a benefit. But with kegs, they're really a different type of storage vessel. So kegs basically have a, uh, they're really designed as a long-term storage device. So we wanted to make sure the auction transmission rate was as low as we could possibly get it, which is why we use that special blend. Now, of course, we also use, uh, aside from the nylon and other additives, we also use a colorant in here because, you know, the brown tint is already known broadly in the beer industry to be the best at blocking the damaging light. So when I say damaging light, I mean, you know, the damaging light, which is violet to slightly ultraviolet. So in that range of just where you can see it to beyond outside of the, uh, you know, the spectrum you can see with your eyes. So brown has been known to block that. So of course, a keg where you're also taking it from place to place or you're taking it out to, you know, a friend's house is possible of some ambient, um, you, you know, UV or violet light exposure. And last thing you want is your precious beer to get skunked. The other thing we're doing is we're putting all of these, they're coming with a uh, graduated sticker so you can see the, uh, the uh, how much beer you've got left in the keg. Uh, they do come with a floating dip tube assembly. Now our floating dip tubes also include the filter at the end of the cage. That's quite important. There's nothing worse than hops getting stuck in the poppet itself. It's much more difficult to clean out. So we always put that filter unit on the end of the cage. The other thing I should say is this new design, we also have the handles protect the posts as well. That's really important because if you have posts sort of protruding past the top of the keg or something like that, they're more likely to get damaged. It means that you can't double stack as well. So if you've got, for instance, two of these, you can basically double stack and the handles interlocking like that. And you can even double stack them with the disconnects attached as well. So for instance, let's say I've got my beer line like this and I'll just put it underneath like so. I can actually hook up my beer and gas line like this. And then what I can do is still enable myself to double stack the kegs like that. The other thing you can do is stack them upside down. Let's say if you really wanted to do like, let's say a, a closed loop transfer and get every single bit of liquid out of there uh, before you start filling the keg, you can turn it upside down and still get to the pressure release valve where it will drain out to the bottom uh, of the keg. And if you pull this pressure release valve, that'll you know, draw every last little bit of liquid out of the keg for a closed loop transfer. So you can also store them in both formats, obviously, because they stack upside down like this or right way up, you know, you've got ultimate flexibility. The other thing I should say is also with these handles, we've got a handle which actually interlocks with the uh, tapping head of this unit. So that makes it much easier to undo. So let's say you've tightened this up quite a bit um, and you know, cause you wanna make sure it's absolutely airtight. When you undo it, it's a little bit tricky to get in here. So I thought, look, a smart way to solve that is actually use the handles themselves. So you can hold the uh, keg on the ground like that and then undo the handle and that undoes the whole head of the, uh, of the unit like so. So that just comes off like that. This comes up, as you can see, you can see the silicon dip tube and there's that filter I was talking about a moment ago. So yeah, very easy to clean out. Obviously this internal surface, because it's a blow molded container is extremely smooth. Um, you could use something like the bucket blaster or something to wash these out, but generally they're so smooth it's barely even necessary. You put in a scoop of PBW, give it a bit of a shake around and Bob's your uncle. Now I know we're gonna get asked this question, which is can this be used as a pressure fermenter keg? Now absolutely it could be, but look, in our opinion, we've got much better vessels out there which are dedicated for fermenters. 
When we uh, started off making all these different PET blow molded vessels, we put a bit of a line in the sand and said, you know, for a fermenter, we really feel like the clear PET was the best option because clear PET uh, enabled you to see what's going on in the fermenter. Generally for a, uh, a fermenter, you're leaving that inside a dark place when it's fermenting. Um, so, you know, clear was the best choice and being able to see all of everything flocking out, seeing the clarity of the beer was really easy. So we felt that clear was kind of the best option in that opinion. The other thing is all of the fermenters that we sell, which are dedicated fermenters, have a larger opening, an opening large enough to get your hand inside. And in our opinion, when you get that ring of Krausen there, it does make it a lot easier to wash out, um, you know, and you don't get that type of Krausen inside a keg, I guess. So if you're using it just to dispense a, a beer. So for our, for our, from our perspective, there were two requirements. Also, we felt like, you know, the pressure requirement is different for a keg and for a fermenter as well. Generally speaking, the smaller diameter opening allows us to easily get up to much higher pressure ratings on the kegs. So that's another thing that sort of like, you know, changes our different opinion on, you know, where they should sit. And then lastly, I should say the barrier material as well is important. So as I said before, we use like a, uh, a blend of nylon and some other products inside the PT and a proprietary bend blend of uh, PT that we use to basically improve the barrier property. So if we get clear, you know, just, you know, st stock standard PT and make a fermenter like the Firmzilla or the All Rounder, as I said, we'd recommend that for one month, but because we use this mono barrier blend inside these, we can get three times that, so up to three months uh, is what we recommend for storage for ultra light beers especially. So look, certainly there's some beer styles, like you know, if you've got ales or some type of uh, you know, stouts and stuff like that, you know, a reasonable amount of oxygen exposure probably won't be even be very noticeable to be quite frank, but we set a very, very high bar on these products and say what's the most oxygen sensitive beer, and that's probably a very light pilsner or lager or something like that, and oxygen exposure definitely will kill the flavor in beers like that in particular, which is why we say kegs designed for long-term storage, you know, it should be of that. The other thing I should touch upon is the size. This is 20 liters, so it's 20 liters pretty much almost to the brim here. Now, if you're doing a standard batch, that's 20 liters. So don't think you can get a 20 liter batch and put it into a 20 liter fermenter because it doesn't really work that well. Generally, we recommend at least a 25% headspace. So typically for a fermenter of this size, we're talking about 15 liters. So yeah, sure, if you're into smaller half size batches and stuff like that, these are probably great. But in reality, the majority of our customers are you know, doing a 20 liter or 23 liters of beer at a time. And it's not really very suitable in that respect. So to answer the question, Yes, you can use this as a fermenter. The floating dip tube works well. This whole top piece is very easy to sanitize. In fact, you can put this entire top piece inside the dishwasher to make sure it's absolutely sanitary every time you were to ferment. But in reality, I would like to see people who are keen on fermentation getting a proper dedicated, you know, all rounder or firm zilla conical or something like that instead, because I really think they're better for the job. So if you are using this as a pressure fermenter, I'll also say remember to use the correct spunding valve. We've got blow tie spunding valves like this and like this, which aren't expensive, they do a fantastic job. And because they're a diaphragm spunding valve, they really work very well. A lot of you guys might get tempted to go, oh, well, I've got a pressure release valve on here, so I'm hunky-dory, no need for a spunning valve. This is meant as a last line of defense. So if you see this open, you're supposed to take it apart, clean out this pressure release valve and put it back on clean. The reason I say that is, because this you, you, this is meant to this is designed for um, it to open and close when you've got the pressure coming from the fermentation process and that built up CO2 and a little bit of Krausen and stuff like that. If that gets through here and dries up and that fails, you've still got this last line of defense. So when beer dries up on stuff, especially pressure release valves, it can greatly increase that opening pressure. So if you've got a dark stout, that black sticky sugar dries honestly like glue. And that's something that can increase this opening pressure of the pressure release valve substantially. So never use a pressure release valve like this as your only device to release pressure. Please don't do it. It's not, not designed for that. It's a safety device. Don't use it as a spunding device. Now, another thing we've done with this particular type of keg, we've tried to make it as tall and as narrow as possible, so as close to the corny keg shape as possible. That also means we can fit more into the kegerators because generally it's the floor space which is restricting you of how many kegs you can fit in. So as you can see, this is the Series X, uh, or X1 is the same size internally. So as you can see, I can fit three of these in there. Look, some of the other ones that you see on the market you can only fit two. Um, same with the Series 4.1, which is also known as the XL. 
The other thing is we've got the Series X Plus. That's a bigger one. So typically that would take eight corny kegs. It takes six of these instead. However, if you've got a competitor's uh, you know, PT keg, it only fits four. So yeah, certainly it's uh, you know larger than a corny keg, but certainly more narrow and you can squeeze more into the standard kegerator than some of the other PET kegs that you see out there. Last but not least, we put a chime on the base of this, which really came up the sides to protect the base because a lot of people, if they were handling these a little bit rough, the highest chance of punctures are basically on this bottom edge. So that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoy using the Oxybar 20 litre kegs with our mono barrier wall. Look, if you wanna hear about any other cool stuff that's coming out, definitely bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now, and that way you'll get notified of all the new products we're bringing out. And of course, join our homebrew community group. We've got a Facebook homebrew community group with literally tens of thousands now of people on it. So join that and be part of the discussion as well. That's it and see you guys next time. Bye.